Welcome to Inspiring Women with Lori McGraw. I am your host, Lori McGraw. I have spent the past 30 years in leadership, and over the years, I've come to learn one thing. Women need women, and not just any women, but inspiring women. Tune in every week to hear from women at the pinnacle of their careers and from others who are just starting out. Episodes can be found at inspiringwomen.show or subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening, and I hope you will be inspired. Today on Inspiring Women, we are talking to Katie Goodman. I am very excited to be talking to Katie this morning. She's a millennial. She graduated from Mississippi State, and she graduated with a degree, dual degree in international business and Spanish. She focused on marketing, did her big girl job for a couple of years, and then transitioned in some other things. So Katie today is a podcast host. We call her an influencer. She's um, very focused on soccer, women's soccer. She hosts our cup of tea. Title Lake, she'll tell us all about it. Katie, I'm excited for this conversation. Thanks for being on Inspiring Women. Glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of giggled and it's like, here, I'm talking to an influencer. I'm like, but am I? Ooh. <laughs> but yes, yes, yeah. This is, listen, I don't really know a lot about the influencer space. So I like take cues from my 27 year old son and, you know, I had him sort of like, you know, check you out online. And so he said, yes, mom, she's an influencer. So that's an official. um, (laughs) Yeah, it is true. It is true. But I don't know why it makes me giggle. I am in fact an an influencer, especially in the soccer place, but I don't know. I guess the term has been used a lot. So I just giggle at it. But yes, I am 100% an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, why don't we get started like we always do on Inspiring Women and talk about like, what are you doing right now? What do you do professionally? What's your day to day? What does that look like? Yeah, so I am actually doing a couple of things at the moment. But the biggest thing for me is Title League FC, which is my podcast where I interview professional soccer players in the MLS. And that is the space I want to be in. And that's the one thing that takes up the majority of my time. But um, to kind of fill the spaces and continue growing in multiple directions, I do things like I write for a publication in the Rio Grande Valley. I'm a ghost writer. So I write articles. Um, I also have another podcast called Our Cup of Tea, which I talk about women's soccer, just in general, all over the world. And I also do production. So I do production management. I shoot and edit a little bit here and there. So I, I kind of have my hand in many pots. I do PR. PR is my stronger background prior to coming into the podcasting. So I kind of have my hand in many buckets. I do some consulting. <laughs> I'm definitely of an entrepreneurial mindset. I'm a yoga instructor. Uh, I have my own yoga business. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh yeah, I do that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very busy. But at the moment, I would like to take my focus specifically into the sports casting, sports reporting, sideline reporting, and podcasting. Well, this is really why I wanted to talk to you on Inspiring Women. You know, on this podcast, I like to focus on speaking to women who are really at the pinnacle of their careers, who have accomplished so much later stage in their careers, and then women like you who are earlier stage in their their careers. And what I find so interesting is I think, you know, you listed off half a dozen different things that you're doing right now. I mean, that is a lot. And it also sounds like you're figuring it out and figuring out where you want your focus to be. But why don't we just step back a little bit? And, you know, when we first met, you told me that, you know, right after college, you got your big girl job and then it just wasn't working out for you. So you chose a different path. So give us a little bit of that background. Yeah. So, you know, I'd been a college athlete my whole, well, I've been an athlete my whole life. And then, you know, I played soccer in college. So once soccer ended, I went into the real world and I was in a cubicle, pent up in a cubicle just looking at Excel files. It worked at Citibank in their Latin American division. And I just kind of felt like I was trapped in a cage. So then I was like, you know what, I'll do this for a while. Moved on to another company thinking maybe it's just the company itself. Maybe I need more purpose for what I'm working for. So I went to Dan and Yogurt and Evian Water. They were, they're, they're two of the same company. And I did sales analytics there. And it was kind of the same song and dance, but I also got really sick. Um, have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and it just really flared up at that time I didn't really know what was happening I was tired all the time sick all the time 
And right around that time, I was also starting to dabble in yoga. And I was just noticing how much better I feel when I move my body, when I'm in the present moment, when I'm breathing, when I'm conscious and aware of the things my body is doing or the the thoughts that are coming up for me. And so I really fell in love with the practice and I fell in love with it so much that I felt, you know what, I'm a business person. Like, why wouldn't I be able to be successful in anything? Why I can just take what I learned in business school and apply it to something that I'm passionate about. And that's essentially what I've been doing since then. I'm just not a cubicle person. And I think it's important for a lot of people to understand. I know I'm not the only millennial out here that's feeling that either. There's a lot of people who are taking that path. But the part that is tough is applying your business background to something you don't really know a whole lot about yet. You know, So every single business venture is brand new, regardless of what it is, whether you're trying to start video production or go into yoga or become a host. It's all new ground that you have to cover. But at the end of the day, it's kind of the same basic principles that also roll into that, you know, your PR, your marketing, your accounting. I just firmly believe that if you're doing something that feels deeply purposeful, that's really in line with who you are, that's authentic to you, you're only going to do well. It's only going to bloom. And I think in the beginning, I it was hard to see that, you know, I, it took me a minute before I realized oh, I should do this on my own. You know, I I started out teaching for other people, other businesses. I learned their business and how they ran their studio. And then I made the jump to, you know, eventually just do it on my own. But it's a thing is you have to go through that process and it feels like you're starting all over again. And it feels like, why do I have a degree (laughs) when I'm hustling like this? But there's so much from my degree that I still use, you know, including Spanish and, and all of that. In doing all that, Katie, the, let's go back to sort of like, you know, the, uh, again, I'll call it the big girl job, the steady paycheck, very clear sort of, you know, this is what the job is and what you're being rewarded for financially. Maybe there's a career ladder there that's obvious, maybe that maybe there's not to a whole number of things with a lot of, you know, significantly less security. And I think hustling, you know, and figuring it out probably is a good descriptor, at least from my perspective in terms of how I hear it. So not everyone does that, right? But there are more and more people of your age group who are doing that. Well, what do you need? Do you have a safety net? Do you, you know, where, how did you have the confidence that you could do this without, I don't know, ending up without, did you have to move back home? Did, you know, how did you sort of manage to do all those things? What was important to have in place? Where did you feel like you were taking the big risks? Right. So luckily for me, because my jobs were so good, I had built up a good savings. And I was not about to take a jump without (laughs) having some cushion. And so that really helped. And aside from that, I think it was one of those things where when you realize something isn't working for you and that it's just not for you or that you're just not into it, it's change or it's going to keep going that way. So I felt kind of like I just had no choice but to do what I really actually cared about. And I kind of think that being an athlete, we work really well under pressure. And I think that's what I needed. I needed a little bit of my own pressure and needed my own accountability, essentially. And so I think that's why a lot of people who go on to the more entrepreneurial side, they thrive there, you know. And also when you're working with small business, there's so much you can do and so many pots you can put your hand in. It's just the job itself is dynamic, it's changing, and it's ever moving. And I am somebody who needs that kind of creativity and analytical balance. And you're pursuing different jobs all at the same time, the next one and the next one, and maybe turning this particular, t- you know, our cup of tea podcast into the title league podcast that you're doing now. So how do you pursue the next thing? Do you have someone that you're trying to follow? Do you have a mentor? Do you have a coach? Are you just bouncing ideas off of friends? What, what's, what's the way that you do this to pursue the next thing? So usually for me, it just happens organically. It's usually my own interest. And just to kind of give you an idea, you know, I don't know if you've heard of the chart, it's called Ikigai. And it talks about purpose and all of these things and how there's all of these different elements that go into finding purpose in your life. And it's doing things with conviction. It's doing things that pay you. It's doing things that the world needs. 
and doing something that you love. If you have all four of those things, then that's where you find your purpose. So that is actually kind of been my blueprint anytime I decide if I want to take on something or not. And so what I have found is that pretty much the things I end up doing are a fusion of my interests. I love hosting and I love soccer. Well, what do you know? I'm now on a soccer podcast. <laughs> and then, you know, I love yoga. I love TV. So now let's do some yoga TV segments or I love yoga and I love dogs. So let's do a, a dog yoga class. You know, that's really where a lot of these things end up. And I think as a creative and someone who is used to doing event management and, and just creating things like that was my job for a minute there was just to create fun ideas and events. And so that's how I really end up in a couple of different areas. And the, the way I see it is for somebody like me, I need to, it's not necessarily about exposure or anything. It's what I'm doing in this very present moment that helps me to be engaged. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I do have ADD and I think that was masked by playing soccer for so long. And that's why I kind of end up in a lot of different things that keep me engaged. And so, and they all are, they're almost all creative. Well, I, I like all these intersections. By the way, I have found Ikigai, a Japanese concept referring to something that gives a person a sense of purpose and a reason for living. So I like these four things. I like these intersections. It sounds like a, it sounds like a life mantra that you're pursuing right now. Katie, I want to move to a little bit about sort of like your age generation. So you and I are in different age generations. And so you're a millennial. Sometimes you say you feel like a Gen Z. Um, <laughs> people always like to describe different age generations and how they think about and show up in career. So here are some of the things that people say about millennials. I'm interested in your thoughts on them. Hardest working generation, but had it the hardest. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, things are a little different than from when like my parents went to school, you know, you could have a part time job, and still pay for everything. Now it's like you need a full time job just to pay for a little bit at a time. Um, just inflation is crazy. And you know, there's, there's a lot of pressures like back when my parents were growing up and my I'm gonna just gonna say my dad is 75, 76. So okay. like, that's a very different generation. But I still, I think about my siblings and they're around the 50, 40s mark. So kind of similar. They just did the whole, we're going to go to school. We're going to get married. We're going to make babies. And then we're going to have a house. And then, so I guess I'm kind of like the black sheep in my family, but it's also a huge generational difference. Right. You're doing it really differently. Okay. Yeah. Here's another one. School did not prepare you for the job market. Uh, agreed because I remember getting to my first job and being like, why didn't somebody teach me more about Excel? Like now I'm just having to learn this. I know I did financial and managerial accounting, but I felt like we could have used a little more assistance on like the basic financial side and how trading and all these things work, especially being in a business degree. And I know a lot of that comes down to electives and whatever, but I just that was my first thought going into a job at a bank, like at the corporate level. But for the most part, like when I look back on it and how I apply it to like some of my more entrepreneurial activities, I still apply things from like my marketing classes that I took an entrepreneurship class, you know, there's still some things that, that I apply there. And a lot of my takeaway from my degree is mostly like if you can do that, you can do anything. Like if you can study for hours at a time, you'll be fine, you know? Yeah. Well, another thing that I'll just say, and it sounds like this is true for you that I, I am, I find in talking with, I'll just say younger professionals that the going out in, you know, I don't really know something, but I need to gain new skills. There's a lot of different resources out there and there seems to be just, you know, let, let's go learn. Let's go figure that out with a little bit of confidence that, you know, you're somehow prepared to continue to learn and get what you need. Okay. Last one in terms of the generation descriptor, anxious, optimism. Optimism. Anxious optimism. Interesting. I'm like, that does sound like me now that you say it, but I've never <laughs> heard that ever. Um, and I think, I think that probably stems from the fact that there's so much uncertainty all the time. I mean, there's a housing collapse in 2008, there's um, pandemics, there's everything. I think the biggest struggle for my generation is they go into these jobs, especially like social media management, and people want to pay them like $15 an hour when these people have degrees and are really good at that kind of stuff, you know? So 
I can see how like my generation is full of anxiousness if we're not being paid well enough for prices of inflation and things like that. And also just like, what do you do with your life? You know, what are, what are you purposeful about? And I think that whole purposeful question triggers a lot for people. Right. And so in terms of that ikigai, ikigai I'm going to try and get this, get this <laughs> correct. Ikigai. And, ikigai. Yeah. And, and finding, finding that purpose, how does the pandemic change your outlook on things? Because you were pursuing these five, six different things at one time, you know, before the pandemic hit, then it hits. Now you're sort of in the throes of pursuing a number of things. And it seems like they're moving forward in a really positive way for you. Yeah. So actually for me, I'll do icky guy like every six months to a year because you change. Like I think about the first time I ever did icky guy and it was purely me talking about branding yoga and creating a yoga business. And fast forward to now, it is a little bit different. So the difference between prior to the pandemic, I was working at a production company. I, w- I had my yoga thing. And then I eventually after that moved into a PR firm. And so because I was looking for that stability and I wanted a little bit of stability while I started building my own thing, which actually at the time was a TV show about health and wellness. That's a whole nother story, right? So yes, I'm in a lot, I'm all over the place. But, you know, again, it's a fusion of interest, a fusion of, okay, I like TV and production and I like yoga. So let's do something that's purposeful that helps other people. And um, I can create the show and do this thing. Um, it got picked up by a couple of production companies and for random reasons, one, one producer went to the NBA bubble, so it couldn't work. And then the other company totally went under, left to LA. It was crazy. I was like, okay, whatever. So that happened. And then this is all during the pandemic. I'm working at a PR firm, still not exactly where I want to be. So I really leaned into the yoga and I just booked out all my, my yoga schedule. And I was actually doing okay with that. And then I started playing soccer again. I took a 10 year break <laughs> and I just decided to come back because I actually had an idea about a soccer business. I know I'm all over the place. The the more I talk about this, the more I'm like, wow. But I had an idea for a soccer business. (laughs) Like, how did this all happen for you, Katie? We need a chart. We need a visual representation (laughs) of my thought patterns. Yeah, no, but randomly, I was uh, kicking around with one of my friends who's a yoga instructor. And she was like, hey, you want to talk? You want to grab a coffee? I was like, why don't we just kick around? Because she used to play soccer too. So we're kicking around and we're thinking, man, what a great idea. This is so therapeutic. There's a bunch of people out there like us who maybe can't have contact anymore in soccer. So why not make a program where people can play and kick around without actually having contact, like more of a fitness thing. So this is how this stuff comes about. It's my friends are like-minded. We have creative mindsets. We have cool ideas and we're like, hey, well, why not? Let's see what happens. And you try them. So Katie, maybe let's just one sec go to like the flip side of it. So all of these things, it's almost like, you know, a storybook of how, you know, you pursue an idea and then it turns into something for you that turns into the next thing and the next thing. But what about when something doesn't work out for you? How do you handle that? Is it easy for you to just brush it off? And if so, like, why is that? Or if not, how do you deal with it? It just depends on what the setback is. Like there are some things that might derail me a little bit and there's other things that might not. I am someone who has experienced some heavier situations, some heavier traumas in my life. So when something doesn't work out like a job, it just seems so small to me versus some of the other things I've experienced. So I feel like I have become more resilient as a result of those situations And yeah, it it sucks. And I give myself time and space to feel the hurt of something not working, but it depends on in what terms it didn't work. Was I the reason it didn't work? You know, did I actively choose to leave this or did it leave me? There are so many ways in which things cannot work out. And at the end of the day, especially with what I have going on right now, with how happy I am with where I'm at in my life, it's just one of those things that I realize it is going to work out in the way it's supposed to. As long as you just keep putting the work in, I think what's meant for you will authentically and naturally flow. And that's not even just the universal energetic thing. Like that's just kind of like the basics. Like if you enjoy math, then you're going to do well at math. You know, if you enjoy soccer and talking, you're going to do well at soccer and talking. 
Well, it's, it's a lot of perspective. It's it's great perspective, and it's and you've got a very good sort of it seems to me introspection in terms of you know how to absorb setbacks and then just uh, push forward. Katie, here's my last question before we close out here. You know, the next five years, the next ten years, in terms of the if you can envision the dream job or the dream whatever it is that you want to be, what does that look like for Katie Goodman? Yeah, so that looks like building my podcast out and making it awesome and getting more listenership and interviewing cool people and awesome names, but also getting on maybe um, another authoritative resource, kind of like an ESPN FC or a Fox Soccer, doing some sideline reporting or journalistic work. That would be my ideal life. Um, as far as yoga goes, I love it. I love it. But I think it will always be something on the side for me. You know, I think it will always be something that I use for myself personally and spiritually. So when I think of work, I actually prefer to pour into this. Coming back to soccer just opened up my eyes on another level. I think it's like having your first love versus another passion, you know, and nothing matches it. And it's one of those things where sometimes things are so easy to us that we don't understand that people will value the information that we know about something. So soccer to me felt like, well, yeah, everybody knows soccer. But then I realized not everybody can analyze it or talk about it. And so it's just finding your niche at the end of the day. And so for me, my niche is soccer and it's production, it's talking, it's being creative, creating ideas. And who knows, maybe an offshoot business might come from that. But at this moment, I would be entirely happy just doing my podcast and and then maybe doing some silent reporting or something. Well, I can't wait to be following you, Katie, and see where this goes. And when I'm watching ESPN and I see you in the future, <laughs> I will not be surprised. This has been a really, really great conversation. We're going to close out here on Inspiring Women. We've been talking to Katie Goodman. And Katie, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. This has been an episode of Inspiring Women with Lori McGraw. Please subscribe, rate, and review. We are produced by Kate Cruz at Executive Podcast Solutions. More episodes can be found on inspiringwomen.show. I am Lori McGraw, and thank you for listening.